Welcome to The Bo Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. I'm here in Orlando at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention where faith leaders connect with faith communities. I was able to speak with two individuals who have court cases going all the way up to the United States Supreme Court involving free speech, free expression, and how that squares with LGBTQ discrimination. Jack Phillips is the owner of Masterpiece Cake Shop. He didn't want to make a cake for a gay couple in Colorado, and he got sued, but he won his case on religious grounds, as Colorado had targeted his faith. But now he faces another challenge from a trans lawyer who wanted him to make a cake celebrating her gender transition. He argues once again that he shouldn't have his art, which is his speech, to be compelled. Here's Jack Phillips and his attorney, John Scruggs. Well, Jack, John, thank you so much for being here with me. Jack, your case goes back about 10 years ago, I believe, when you didn't want to make a cake that went against your beliefs. You won your case on free speech grounds, but the fight didn't end there. What happened next? So the fight in, didn't end there because uh, the same day that, uh, well, the day that the U.S. Supreme Court granted our case, we got a call from an attorney in Colorado saying that you know, he wanted a cake that was blue on the outside and pink on the inside, and we were told that those colors were symbolic of a sex change, changing from a man to a woman. So we told this attorney that, uh, you know, we would gladly create other custom cakes, but we couldn't create that one because it expressed a message we didn't want to create. And so that attorney filed a complaint with the state, and the state sued us the second time. So we wanted the U.S. Supreme Court to go back to this, this court again with the state. And then they dismissed the charge, but the same attorney is now suing us in a civil lawsuit. And so we're in our third case. That's gracious. Well, and that's Autumn Scardina, correct? That's who we're talking about. So Autumn Scardina is transgender and wanted a cake that was both pink and blue, right? That's what you just mentioned. And you were prepared to make it until Scardina told you that it was to celebrate her gender transition, which you obviously didn't agree with. So it sounds like it was premeditated, right? I mean, she could have gone to any cake maker in Colorado, correct? Yeah, and we were also told in our most recent case, uh, the trial by Scardina, that if I win the case, I'd get a call the next day with another cake, and we'd start all over again. And these cakes, these cases are designed to correct the errors of my thinking. So it's targeted, you it, believe? This is targeted. Uh, John, Scardina said that um, she wanted to challenge the veracity of whether Jack would actually serve LGBTQ customers. And so where is the balance between Jack's right to speech through his artistry and a protection against discrimination against sexual orientation? Yeah, it's an easy line. It's, it's about the what, not the who. So Jack does serve everyone. He offered Autumn Scardina to other cakes and items, but he just couldn't express a message that Jack dis disagreed with. And that principle should protect everyone. It should protect the LGBT artist, it should protect the Muslim artist, right? The government shouldn't be forcing anyone to say or speak a message they disagree with. So that's the line. It's an easy line to draw, and we're hopeful the courts will draw that line in the future to protect Jack and our other clients. You know, it's interesting, John. Um, we go back a ways, actually back to Memphis, and you know probably that I'm a singer. And uh, back in November, I was scheduled to sing for the Florida Panthers, the NHL team. And I've been booked since January. And then two weeks before I ended up singing, I got a message from their, uh, their game day office saying, we need to change you out to replace you because it's Pride Night. So my sexuality and my view was being discriminated against just because I was straight, because they wanted a gay singer for Pride Night. So, John, my question for you is, you know, I mean, my art is singing, Jax is baking cakes. Should we be able to use our talent without compelling our art? I think that's exactly right. And even in Jack's first cakes, there were other art cake bakers and other cake designers who were allowed to decline to create cakes that criticize same-sex marriage, right? And the Colorado Commission allowed that. But they singled out Jack and said, hey, Jack, because of your beliefs, we are going to compel you. That doesn't make any sense. Why single out people of faith or particular views, right? The First Amendment applies to everybody. It protects everybody, and it should protect everyone equally. Well, if, if, if Jack were a Jewish or a Muslim baker and a couple wanted bacon on their cake, I'm sure you guys have considered this, and the cake maker refused because of religious reasons, is that along the lines of what you're fighting for? I think that's exactly right in the sense of as long as it's a message about the what and not the who. Right? As long as someone is serving people regardless of who comes in the door and just says, hey, I've across the line rule that says I can't promote certain messages for anyone. You know, Jack wouldn't create certain cakes for anyone no matter who asked. And that's the, the line that the court should draw and that we've argued. And it's a common sense line that just makes sense. How are you feeling uh, where the justices' heads are right now? 
we feel good. We, oral argument is on December, and we expect a ruling in Lori Smith's case. Yeah, any uh, day now, right? Any day by the end of June, and we're, we're hopeful, and we're hopeful that a win in her case will protect Jack, protect other artists across the country, and really protect all Americans. Jack, do you feel that you've been targeted as a result of your initial Supreme Court win by this latest case? Yeah, and that was admitted in court. You know, like I said, if I win this case, we'll get a, a call the next day with another cake. And this attorney also asked us to create a cake of Satan smoking marijuana, trying to find a way to trip us and trap us. Um, also, right at the beginning, two weeks after this started in July of 2012, we were getting emails from this um, attorney in Colorado. So this is definitely targeted. Outside of the just the legal challenges, though, uh, since you're in Colorado, which I've lived in before, have you been targeted personally? Do you get threatening messages? Do people treat you differently or poorly? We've gotten like a lot of hate mail. Um, I had a death threat that came right away. A man called me up, said he's on his way to the shop. He had a gun, and he's going to blow my head off. And I felt it was serious enough to call the police and have them intervene. And the, the man kept calling and saying, you know, what street he was on and when he was going to arrive. And, you know, uh, my daughter was there at the time with my four-year-old granddaughter. I had them go stay in the back of the shop till the police came to straighten it out. Other hateful, threatening calls, lots of them. So. But you still feel good about where you are and you're going to continue making cakes. Yeah. And... On the other side, though, we had a, a man testify on our behalf in this case, a former gay activist who came in to see who this man is who won't make cakes for gays. We found out it's not that I won't make cakes for gays. I won't make these certain cakes with messages. And he's become a good friend, and I made lots of cakes for him and served yeah. him. And so he testified on our behalf in the court, and he also went through deposition on our behalf. Another case that just heard oral arguments in the U.S. Supreme Court is that of Lori Smith, owner of 303 Creative. She wants to design custom wedding websites, but not ones that don't align with her Christian faith. Similar to Jack Phillips, she's being targeted for her desire to use her art to express her religious beliefs. So she faces Colorado's exact same law that says that she is discriminating. Here's my chat with Lori Smith. Well, Lori Smith and Kelly Fedoric, thank you so much for being with me today. Uh, Lori, you're the owner of the graphic design firm 303 Creative in Colorado, and you wanted to expand into custom weddings, but you oppose same-sex marriage. So you wanted to post a message about why you didn't support it, apparently, which violates Colorado's anti-discrimination law. Your argument is that this is your free speech, correct? Not only my free speech, but for the free speech of each and every one of us. So yes, I'm a graphic designer, a custom graphic designer. I create custom graphics and websites, and I want to create consistent with my faith. And Colorado won't let me do that. Colorado is forcing me to communicate messages that go against my beliefs, and it's just simply not right. Uh, through my business, I work with people from all walks of life. I have clients who identify as LGBT, but I cannot create every message that's requested of me. So at the stake in my case is everyone's right to create consistent with what they believe. Whether your views on marriage are similar or different, everyone must be free to speak and communicate and share ideas without the threat of unjust government punishment. And Kelly, um, the, case, uh, the case's oral arguments were heard in December in the Supreme Court. How do you think that went and where do you think the justices heads are right now? I think arguments went very well. We, we felt like they were very receptive to our argument that free speech is for everyone. The Supreme Court has never said or allowed the government to compel anyone's speech of, of speech of artists. So we're, we're very hopeful, very optimistic, uh, as they seem just very uncomfortable with this argument that Colorado made, which is they have the right to censor Lori's speech. What's really interesting about Lori's case is that Colorado agrees that Lori serves everyone regardless of who they are yeah. and that everything she creates is custom expression. It is speech. But what's staggering and terrifying is that they think they have the right to come in and dictate what she can say and what she can't say. And so we're very optimistic, very hopeful that the court will give a very strong ruling upholding free speech for all Americans. So it's really more a case not about her discriminating against the clients. You said you do have LGBTQ clients. It's about them compelling the speech of what she can and can't say as a business provider. Absolutely. She serves everyone regardless of who they are, including those who identify as LGBT. For her, it's always about the message that the person is requesting. It's never about the person who's requesting it. And so it's, it's all about speech. It's all about expression and whether the government can, can tell us what to say or what to believe. And this, this should terrify all of us, regardless of what side of the issue we're on. Because if the government can censor Lori, it then has the power to censor 
anyone else in the United States. So Kelly, do you feel that her case is more about an attack on free speech rather than a protection against discrimination? It's absolutely all about free speech and, and free speech is essential to a flourishing, flourishing and pluralistic society. It's a basic human right and there's a lot, a lot on the line here for the freedom of speech. Keep watching at EpochTV.com forward slash The Bow Show.